Hello, everyone, and welcome down to episode number 81 of the Down South Photo Show. You know the how the intro goes. Maybe it's Cam Blake over there and it's Brendan Waits here. How are you, Cam? Um, good. Maybe I should have done the intro like you suggested because that was terrible. Nah, I, I was listening back to an, uh, an episode from like in the teens, and that's when yeah, I think right. I started doing that intro, and I went, yeah, I think uh-huh. rolling that out 65 times is enough. I had a lady on a workshop not long ago who listened and l- listened religiously. Mm. And she actually said, I liked the show earlier. Like, to, she goes, I don't know if I like the show as much now. She said, earlier you guys were, yeah, you guys were more natural and it was more just chit chatting and not so much like structured. I'm like, it's not structured. It's, <laughs> we have a couple of dot points and that's about it. But yeah, that's right. Still an avid fan, but just not as much as a fan as she was earlier or he right. could have been either. Well, um, what I will, I'll keep a, a little bit of structure and say thank you to everyone for liking, subscribing, following the channel and all that cool stuff. Yep. Um, we are flying along with the subs on the YouTubes, but um, we're going to make a concerted effort to get uh, a bit more, <laughs> a bit of a hit rate on the old uh, audio side of things, aren't we, Cam? Why is that, Brendan? <laughs> I have no idea. It's probably because we've got we'd, we've got no position in the charts. <laughs> well, we're on, we're on the charts and... Oh, uh, yeah. We are, it's true. we are, and look, it's not about numbers. Like, I know there's other shows around that seem to only care about how popular they get, and that that's on them. Yeah. Uh, we're not popular. We're we're not trying to be cool. It's as we go back to the very start of this idea, it was just about you and I chewing the fat over photography for an hour. Mm. Mm. And anyone that wants to listen, listen. But that's if right. you do listen on the podcast, please share it around and right. like it, and, and and get our numbers ask- up. <laughs> and get our numbers up and put us back in the charts. Maybe maybe our show's just done. Maybe we're over. Maybe it's it. Oh, that, we'll jump the shark. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got yeah. 19 more episodes to get to 100. Will That's we get right. there? We'll raise the bat. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no. I think that'll be... that'll that, that The first 100 is just the beginning, Cam. Oh, shit. No, is there's no <laughs> way. There's no way we're doing more than... That's right. I don't know. I wonder how many. Maybe we should have a guess of how many we'll do in the end. Yeah. Who knows? We'll, Maybe we'll on the hundredth episode, we'll have a like a bit of a guess. We have a so we know we know we know to go back to the hundredth episode and see how. Speaking far of competitions, it. Cam, this is completely unscripted. We we haven't run a competition for a while. Um, no, people generally like it. But what we did last week, in fact, this was your idea. You yeah, put up yeah. on Facebook, "Hey, show us your photos." And <laughs> you say something else then. Hey, show us your <laughs> hey, photos. show us your photos, and it yeah. went really well. We had heaps of people putting yeah. up their photos, and lots it of did lots yeah. of sharing of images. And man, how's the uh, how's the quality of our audience? Well, it's putting us to shame. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I was I like, think... oh wow, okay, people are actually good at this caper. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we shouldn't be running the show. Maybe the uh, the, <laughs> the viewers should be. But no, we did. We put up some. Uh, a little a little teaser up there saying guys can you share some photos and it went yeah. gangbusters as you would say it did um we had i'm just looking at it now we had heaps and heaps and heaps of people yeah um, no, and, put up and, photos, and seriously, folks, we're not just blowing smoke there were there were some cracking images there jump onto our facebook page and check it out if you haven't already uh yeah. and chuck a photo of yours up there if you haven't already we we like to see them um yeah you know, and 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 the community, as we call it, get to see yeah. your work as well and what you're into. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to necessarily be a landscape photo either. You can put a photo up there of that you've taken of a bird, or as long as it's PG rated, or a hmm. or a wedding that you shot, or something. Anything. Yeah. We're, we're happy. We yeah. love photography, so we're happy to see them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it did go gangbusters. But you want to run a comp? Yes. Okay. So do you remember? Uh, I think it was. I don't know. February last year, for goodness sake, so ages ago, we had a month-long photography competition, yep. didn't we? And oh, that's we, right. And then I re- announced the winner all by myself online because you didn't turn up. Uh, probably. And I think we <laughs> we had a sponsor. So, right, so it's on us. Well, it, as this goes out, this will be the first podcast for June. So right. let's make it for the month of June. We're going right. to um, we'll, we'll run a competition and um, – right we'll we'll have we'll put a post up on facebook and that's where you've got to po- well do we have to can we be fo- facebookist or do we have to can no, they put no, facebook on social media no i think facebook works best mm-hmm. uh so if we're going to do this and well, yeah, this, this is your show you're running this one that's right um, this is my idea uh, this is your idea uh yeah we can put it up on uh we'll put up 
a post and what we'll do we'll pin a post on the page ah, so people can go it see people can go the, in there see you're the social media guru that's what you do yeah. i edit the show you do the social media it's great yeah. so we'll put up a post and we'll pin it on the down yes. south photo show facebook page and then we will w- what are we looking for what's the what's the what's the theme uh, we do well uh, do we need to have a brief or oh what about okay fixed focal length so your image must be shot on a prime Okay, all right. What do you? Th- oh, you don't like that? You hesitate. I just, I'm just thinking, how hard is that going to be to manage? Because people <laughs> can just put up anything and say, yeah, it's on an 85 f two. Yeah, well, this <laughs> we is don't true. Know. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. I, did, um, I didn't think that through. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we should do something a bit more creative, like, okay, like a landscape shot, but with shallow depth of field or something like that. You know, like, okay. right. not sharp from front to back, but like maybe an element that's sharp and the rest is all. Well, cl- clearly we'll put our heads together and come up with something maybe by the end yep. of this episode, but uh, yep. okay. we'll make it for the month of June and we'll try and get a sponsor on board for it. Right. And if we don't get a sponsor on board, camera and photo will provide the prize. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And maybe it will I, be juicy. Gotta... It'll be a good prize. It will be, no, no, it'll be. Well, maybe, maybe we can combine our talents together. Okay. Because I sent oh. you some things today. Folks, this Maybe. is you're li- actually listening. It's like you're listening into one of our meetings <laughs> that we don't have. <laughs> we, we don't have. This is this is the longest meeting we've ever had. It is. Mm. Um, anyway, we'll work it out. We'll put something on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, uh, it'll be up there from tomorrow, and yes. we'll work out the prize and stuff like that. I can't imagine why we don't rate high on anything anymore. Yeah, that's right. It'll, it'll uh, when we say tomorrow, that's that's tomorrow our time, which is actually last Thursday your time. So <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah, the, wonder, so, the wonders of, uh, of of putting up podcasts on a Friday night. Yeah, we'll work it out. It'll happen. Oh, we will. Yeah. Yes. Um, cool. Shall well, we talk good. backgrounds? Because I'm I'm curious about your background. I saw you put this photo up. Uh, yeah. For those of you who can't see the background, would you like to explain to our listeners what you've got there, Cam? Well, I'll do the little cover it up and have a chat. Uh, so this is a shot from the recent Bruni Island workshop. I just got back for a little three day junk it down to there uh we had four wonderful customers myself and also jamie uh jamie buchanan who is jamie lee photography or jamie lee landscapes online um we went down there and took some customers so this is a shot of the bruni island lighthouse um i'm not don't think it's the southernmost lighthouse in australia but it's there it's got to be close to it uh but we just got some spectacular light over this coming in from really low on the right hand side and just lit up the lighthouse and the little hill there. We had some big storm clouds at the back and a bit of action down the bottom left. And yeah, it was pretty cool. We had a really good workshop and we got some incredible light, just crazy light the whole time, which is good. Is that so, uh, late in the day, that photo, or is that early? That is about 20 minutes before sunset. Yeah, right. Beautiful. So it was real, it was real, real late. Um, and then we actually drove around further to the lighthouse. And we got some really, we got some, it, it phased off before the sun went down, but for the last 10 minutes, it was pretty dramatic. And there was all these rain showers coming over and yeah, you know, that really cool light. And yeah, mm-hmm. you got some, good. you got some drama. We got lots of drama, which is what you want. Um, Jamie and I were looking at the weather before we went there and we went, oh, it's looking a bit yuck. Mm-hmm. And then the yuck turned into awesome and we had a really good trip. So yeah. Pro pro tip there is that if you're going somewhere, look at the weather, yes, but don't get discarded by, you know, or disheartened by uh, if it's going to rain or be windy because usually the the crazy weather gets you the best photos. So no stay question. out in there. And we do. We stayed out in the rain. We did everything. We went on a boat cruise I was just talking about to you off, off air and uh, yeah. that was pretty wild. Um, oh, we, we, will, we will delve into that a little more on tonight's yeah, show. I'm yeah, yeah. Cool. Curious. That would be good. And, and yours looks like a, a nice background there from a potential location we're visiting. Correct. So what you're looking at there, I'll cover. Yeah, this is Lake Tyrrell. Um, so this is up in the Mallee region of Victoria. Um, so just near Sea Lake and about oh, 45 minutes west of Swan Hill. Um, it's becoming quite a popular place for photography, and I can see why because it's uh, you know it's gnarly. It's an it's a uh, a dry lake bed um, and it's basically exposed as part of what used to be a massive inland sea. That's actually, it's remnants of that, which is still there. Um, right. And there's some pretty cool places around there to get some awesome photos, like lots of textures and stuff like this. Yeah. Unfortunately, the the only 
day that I, well, I've been there a couple of times, but I was only there once on sunset and it was that day and the sunset was pathetic. So right. um, I am quite looking forward to getting back up there when we do our workshop up there in October. Yeah. Now it is, um, it's one of those things, isn't it? Where you sort of, I think people don't maybe realise with landscape photography just how much, not luck, but how much good luck goes a long way. So mm-hmm. you can go to that place and go, oh, I'm going to go get some amazing shots and get this incredible sunset. And you get up there and it's just poo. Yeah. Um, or you go up there and it's absolutely amazing. Like it's, it can be a difference of a day. Sometimes it's a difference of an hour or something like that. No, that's right. Uh, I, I always sort of equate it a bit to fishing. Like, you know, you can have mm-hmm. all the gear in the world and everything, but it doesn't mean you're going to catch anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's and, and there is a bit of luck involved with it as well. But I think the better photographers and we've mentioned this a couple of times on the show will be the ones that use the conditions to their advantage. Um, yeah. Yeah. And speaking for myself, when, when I, if I'm teaching people photography, that's one of the main things I go to. So in a couple of weeks, well, we've got our Ballerine Peninsula yep. workshop in yep. a couple of weeks. And then the weekend we after that, I'm doing a seascapes workshop here on the Ballerine as well. Yeah. And um, just workshop central at the moment, Cam. And that's a bit uh, crazy, isn't it? It is. And um, yeah, we book these workshops. We say, well, this is when it's going to happen. Sorry, but we can't tell you what the weather's going to be like. But, uh, yeah. you know, f- yeah. fingers crossed we'll, we'll get same. But if we don't get the great weather, we'll show you what yeah. you can do in those situations. Well, that, that's the thing. And yeah, it, I think that's the benefit in a way of going on a workshop as well. Um, is that you're not forced, like you're paid and you're ready to go. Like you, you've got to be there. So regardless of what happens, you you go on yeah so you make the most of what what you get and yeah. most of the time like on this trip we had to bruny island we had a few moments where like well it's just not going to work and it turned out to be a lot better than we expected so um yeah again i say don't be a fair weather photographer yeah get get your ass out in there and get that camera snapping it one here's a pro tip big massive pro tip that i try and teach everyone as much as i can is expose for the light that you see so yeah. the shot behind me I was teaching the guys here, this light across the back of this mountain here was magic. Like, you know, you know, that light where you see it is like, that's, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. And all I do is I use my exposure compensation. I shoot aperture priority. I use my exposure compensation and just underexpose it until that light looks really good yeah. in my viewfinder or on my screen. And then I don't really care where the shadows and everything else falls because I know I've got that light perfect. And every time you come back, all you do is edit to that light and then you can play around with the sky a bit and all the details there. But if you overexpose this shot behind me, it just becomes flat with no dynamics and definition and stuff like that. So expose for the light you see, whether or not you're shooting manual or aperture priority or whatever, use your exposure correctly is the word I guess I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. Get correct exposure on where the good stuff is. Yeah, yeah. Not just Don't yeah. let the camera do it because so many yeah. people just let the camera go. Cameras are stupid. Yeah. They've got no idea. Yeah, no, they you, they need someone in charge. And and yep. case in point is um, over your right shoulder, you can see where the fall off of the light, no, your other right, uh, where yeah, the fall, yeah. Yeah. fall off of light is happening. Mm. There's some nice light on the edge there, but it falls yep. away because yep. you've correctly exposed for that light that's there. So it's yeah. uh, it works it's really one, well. It's, it's one of the easiest things to do. It takes a bit of practice. It took me a while to get my head around. I think I learned it from something I watched with Peter Eastway. And just looking at oh, his work, the, I'm like, guru. the guru, I'm just looking at his work all the time. It was one of the New Zealand trips he did and everything was just beautifully exposed for the light that just caught my eye and it catches your eye out in the field. So you just got to allow a bit of adjustment. Don't let the camera do the exposing for you. Make some adjustments and work accordingly. So um, on last week's show, you made the bold claim that you would only shoot primes on Bruni yep. Island, yep. a 75 and a 12. Is that right? That's right, a 75 mil 1.8 and a 12 mm. mil f2. So that's in OM digital terms. So that's a 24 mil f2 and a 150 mil 1.8. Right. So um, break it down for us. How did you go? Did you did, did you find yourself shooting a little bit differently, or did you find yourself hankering mm. for a different lens at any point? So I'll, I'll make one confession because I know people on the workshop will dob me in anyway. <laughs> uh, there was a couple of moments where I pulled out the 600 mil lens when we saw the albino wallabies and those shots that I wanted to get for the workshop yeah. type of things. But I would happily say that 95% of my shots were taken on those two lenses for the whole trip. Well, the 600 um, is a prime as well, isn't it? It is a prime, yeah. It's just a very big one. You didn't break um, the rules? 
No, I didn't break the rules, I guess. Yeah, now I mentioned it. Mm. Um, so did I find it hard? Not necessarily. The thing I struggled a bit with, uh, the the wider angle one, so it's a 12 mil, which is equivalent to 24 mil. It could have been just a bit wider. There was a couple of scenes that I really liked the look of and there was like sort of things in the background and big foregrounds I wanted to use and just couldn't squeeze them all in unless I took a few steps back, which sort of took away from it a bit. So there wasn't that ability to get right over your subject with a wide angle and really blow that foreground up. Um, but the 75 1.8, when we went out on the boat, it, like I said, we had massive swells in this boat, like seven meter swells. It was like a roller coaster for two hours. It was unbelievably good. Um, but we were in amongst the waves. So we're going in and out of the waves and some of these mountains and the islands off the side, I had it that the 150 and because we were moving so much, I was able to shoot like F2 on this 150 mil lens combined with the image stabilizer of the camera, I was able to get some really good shots from the boat in really, really rough conditions. So that paid off dividends. Um, I think if I'd gone one of the zoom lenses that couldn't go down to F2 or 1.8, you'd be shooting maybe at F4 or something like that. It might've just been a bit more ISO, you know, might've been a few more adjustments, but I was able to shoot almost ISO 200, 400, the whole way on this boat and get super fast shutter speeds. Um, so that was a real blessing and I got some great shots out of that, but overall it was good. It really made me think, um, like I, and the, the 12 mils, a tiny little lens. So a lot of times I didn't do, use a tripod. I just trusted my stability and, um, it was good. So I got some good shots, definitely tuned my eye into looking at things differently. Yeah. Um, and there was plenty of shots I walked away with, like, uh, can't get that one. I'm in between and I can't go any further. Can't <laughs> wow, go you back. had to so turn I... your back on a photo. That must have hurt. Yeah. And yeah. then we went into a forest and it was funky everywhere in this forest. I'm like, shit. Okay. But then I used the 75 mil, had a, it has a 1.2 meter working distance or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good at, you know, and I was able to use really shallow depth of field with that 1.8. Well, so, yeah. Through the through the magic of editing, while you've been talking, I've actually been putting a few of your photos up on the screen. So um, right. for your okay. for your viewing pleasure, people. So yeah, all those people that are watching and not listening, uh, have a look at those. And those people who are listening and not watching, jump on the YouTube channel and have a look as we scroll through some of the shot yeah. cam shots from Bruni. Yeah, but don't move away from podcast. Go back to the podcast and keep listening. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could maybe um, we could. What, what what do they call it when you when you line up the video? What they used to do on they used to do it on radio. They used to do a um oh it'll come back to me later, it doesn't matter. Simulcast. Oh simulcast, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a word from the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Simulcast. simulcast on triple M. Yeah, that, triple M. Pearl, yeah, I was gonna say Pearl Jam would be in town and it'd be simulcast on triple M or whatever. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are the days. Um but yeah, no, like I enjoyed it. Um and again, I encourage people to try it out. Like, you know, if yeah. you go into one of those, you know, if you go into Antarctica. Don't just take two lenses, take the whole kit if you can. But you know, if you're going somewhere on a weekend or a bit of a trip away, or you just, you know, you go out once a week to do some shots, just take out one focal length and just play with it. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy dividends. doing that, um, particularly if I'm uh, hanging out with the fam and I just want to carry something, you know, that's small as well. I'm not going to stick it in people's face. You know, it's just going to be a yeah. nice small little kit. Like I've got the um, the Lumix 20 mil f1.7. Uh, yep. which is a 40 mil f1.7 lens. So it, it mm. it's really cool for uh, portrait work and a little bit of sort of close-up landscape within landscape sort of stuff. Yeah. It doesn't really lend itself to proper landscape though. So I find that a good good challenge. Do you find particularly when you're shooting, uh, let's say with that 12 mil, yeah. um, do you find purely because it's so small, like everything, it's a little bit disconcerting. Like it's, it feels a bit yeah, weird it is. To be shooting big landscape with such a small little setup. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Sometimes it sort of feels like it's um, too small or too much of a compact lens. Um, yeah. But I, I do like it. I think it's a great little lens. And I had to keep checking my camera a few times because it just sort of almost feel like nothing's on it. And I, <laughs> yeah, I sort of, I sort of had to keep going back to myself. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that small lens. But yeah. Out of it, the quality is great. It's a beautiful little sharp lens. Oh, yeah. And as we know, as you and I would know, like the prime lenses are generally sharper lenses. So yeah. if you if you can deal with it, um, you know, again, I'd, I'd recommend people going out and buying prime lenses. You know, there's always the, the nifty 50. There's always a 24 mil. There's always a something like a 90 mil. Um, you know, if you can 
manage that in your camera bag, uh, you know, you're increasing your sharpness just by having less elements of glass and less zooming, moving parts and stuff. So, yeah, no, I think it's um, it's a good challenge. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, I'd, I'd recommend people go out and try it. Mm. Um, and and I think, like I said, it, it really makes you look differently. Like you look at every scene, like the scene behind you, if I had a 12 mil, I'm like, okay, what can I get with that 12 mil? Or if I have a long lens, I'm like, well, what can I zoom in on? Like there's nothing in between. You've got to think. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I like so, that. So it's good. Out. Yeah. If you've got to think, you're right. doing it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I think we're I think we're in a lazy generation though. People just want to be able to pick, put the camera up, take a snap and go, that's it. And that's what our phones do. Like on the trip, yeah. I was taking shots with our phones and they just look great straight away. Like, oh, that looks awesome. But people don't realize it's done all this mucking around inside and editing. Um, yeah. We've got to, we've still got to be, you know, we've got to keep using our brains. Yeah. Um, not letting other things do it for us, which well, is the, one of the great the thing about The thing about the phone, as much of um, it is, but we'll come back to that. As much as they are good at computational photography, you still got to know yeah. where to point the thing, Cam. You still got to. Yeah. Hundred percent. Do the composition for you. Not yet. No, it's coming. No. But... <laughs> yeah, and that, and that's the thing. It's uh, it's something I, I focus a lot on is composition. Um, mm-hmm. and I think I'm only just realizing it now that I think compositions is something I've actually got good at. Like I, yeah. I never thought I'll, I never I used to look at other people's work and I'm like oh that's a great angle or how'd they do that? But I think I'm getting to the point now. I'm like okay, I can see compositions everywhere and yeah, I can make them work. Um, yeah. And it's great to be able to pass that on to people that come along on workshops because it's taken me 20, 20 years to figure it out or whatever. Um, oh, no, I agree. It does. It's not something I don't know, but you, we've, you always hear that saying, oh, you know, you, you're born with the eye for photography. I, I, yeah. I truly think it is something that can be taught and you can mm. learn. Sure, yeah. some people right out of the gate might be better at it than others. But generally speaking, even then you find it takes that experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know a lot of younger photographers who yeah. are, you know, famous, particularly yeah. landscape photographers. If you think about yeah. it in Australia alone, if you think of your bigger names in landscape photography, mate, they're all over the hill. Old, they're all old farts. Yeah. 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 They are. Yeah. I can, so, I can think of, I can think of one who I think is turning 55 soon. Um, there you go. And uh, he, yeah. And he's starting to look his age as well. And probably been taking photos for what Probably thirty years. years longer. Yeah, you know. I'll so. give a I'll give a shout out to that young guy I was teaching, Oscar. Yes, Elian. He's still putting shots out. He went and did the Overland track not long after us, actually. Very good. Uh, and and I was just flicking through his shots. I'm like, this kid just gets it. He just he's got yeah. a good eye. I yeah. think he's one of those kids that have just he's got an eye for it and understands yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and you get it. You get them. You meet people out there that you know. One minute there. They're a mountain biker. The next minute, they're a photographer taking better shots than you. The next minute, they're playing a musical instrument. Like some people just get everything. Yeah. Um, and yes, but some other people really struggle with composition. And, you know, there's so many rules and regulations about how you should frame a shot, what you look for, and all this kind of stuff. But um, I think one of the best things that I started doing in regards to composition is just looking at other people's work. Yeah. And, and look and, and look through the legends, like look through the guys that have been shooting for years and have done well. And look what works. And you can sort of see there's a pattern that goes through all of them. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even to the point where you see, I'll be I'll look at a photo and if and it'll quite I'll it'll I'll quite often be reminded by of a famous photographer. Yeah. You know, some, yeah someone right. who always shoots in that style. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether it's because of our association uh or that you've brought it more to my attention since we started the Down South Photo Show. Why are there so many people in landscape photos now? Why? Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Get out of the way. I don't want to <laughs> see you. I want to see the bloody... F- <laughs> yeah. Look, there's that... Th- I mean, and it's a, it's a, it's an Instagram thing, surely. It makes... It's the human connection. They see a person and they... I don't know. Do they think, oh, I'd like to be that person in that photo? Is that what it is? I, I don't get it, man. It's and, and we, it's we, we, need, we need we need something on the screen. It goes rant alert, rant alert, rant alert. It's a plague. It's yeah, you know, it's really hard to say stuff these days without people either disagreeing or getting their knickers in a knot or whatever. Um, but I know exactly what you're talking about, and mm. it's funny because 
what was I looking at last night? I was looking at something. I have this love hate relationship with Tourism Tasmania down here. Um, you look, they, they do a great job for bringing people down to the state, and they you know they promote the state really well. And you see Tassie all over the place, which is great. But if you go on and look at their Instagram accounts, um, the photos they share are all the same cliche cliche shots with either they're, they're all the same. They're boring. I feel like the, and and they don't change. They they either have the same sort of low saturated filter on all of them. They either have people standing on mountains looking into the abyss. They either have real shallow depth of field shooting through scrubs and you know things like that. They don't they don't promote photos that are anything outside what is real mainstream these days. And I think that's why people keep doing it because there's a lot of these big tourism mobs and companies, camera companies that share a lot of these shots with people. You know, I could put a guy on the on the lighthouse there with a head torch on, and that'd yeah. be the best photo everyone's ever seen. But you yeah. take the person out of it, and they just go, "Oh, it's just a lighthouse." Yeah, so, it's funny. I, I don't know. I mean, call me an old stick in the mud, but I, I, I have a look at it and I'm just like, what, what's that person doing there? Like, yeah. it, 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 to me, it detracts more than anything. Yeah, but, and I, I, I go, I go, I'll tell you, it goes back to the, it goes back to the social medias, and yeah, you know, going back, maybe not so much. Like, it's funny that you bring this up because I, I don't notice it as much now, but I've unfollowed a heap of things that have it on there. But it, it was a big thing about three or four years ago where every photo had someone in it. All right? yeah. And that's where I had that's where the, the red jacket under the waterfall or the oh. head torch or the staring on the edge of a cliff looking at nothing. Like what what does it bring? And yes, it puts a person in that spot. And I think that's why the tourism companies like it. Because yeah. you know uh, mate, if, if you're an adventure company, if you're advertising, if you're Patagonia or if you're North Face or if you're what it Patty Palin? Does that even exist anymore? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, but, they're, you know, yeah, they're here. Yeah. I get it. That's fine. But yeah. it's when it's, you know, just a it's some Instagram of putting up a, a landscape photo of, you know, of the 12 apostles, but we're gonna put this person with their back turned to you, what's more, yep. <laughs> staring at the 12 apostles. No. Nah, yep. nah, <laughs> that's been done, folks. Can we move on from that? Yeah. Um yeah. I moved on from that a few years ago because I just yeah. looked at it and went, "This just does my head in." And I think I got, I got, I, yeah, I think, I think we are old. I think that's the problem. Like we're not getting any younger, <laughs> and I think we're getting to the point where we're we have just gone past enjoying things to just being oh, no. grumpy, old, talking- grumpy old, grumpy grumpy old men that just want to complain about everything. Um, and you know, people do your photos, go put your people on the cliff faces, or do whatever. That's fine. Now, yeah, a funny story about that. On on the cruise that we did around Bruny Island, this came to my brain just now. We were cruising down. And there's a rock off the edge of some of these some of the tallest cliffs in Australia, and it's called the Eagle because it sort of sits out and looks like an eagle's head. And there was someone who came down from the mainland who hiked out there and decided it was a meter and a half jump down to the top of this rock, and it's yeah. on the top of a 400 meter cliff. He decided to jump on top of that rock and take a selfie. Then realised he couldn't get off the rock, and the Westpac helicopter had to winch him off it. My goodness! And if and if you look at a lot of the rescues and stories recently in the last five years of people dying in wilderness, it's idiots doing selfies on the edges of cliffs or doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. So, yeah. not only does it piss you off, Brendan, it also is risky and dangerous. So, absolutely. Stop but who, who 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 are we to tell people not to do exactly? Are we we're those ones? guys now that are like, ah, that's not music. <laughs> <laughs> we've become yeah. those guys <laughs> we have we have um but yeah i understand what you're saying it's um yeah. it's a bit annoying and yeah. um it, i don't think it like you know but it, it detracts from a nice shot sometimes it does now we, we've got um we've got we're covering a bit of ground tonight but um i think one thing will lead to another as we go through and um yeah now <laughs> this 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 was brought to my attention by not you, but someone else, and then you. <laughs> right. Good. About about a photography competition that was run recently. Um, now, we're not going to name the competition. We're not going to name anyone who was in the competition. That would be scurrilous and no good. We, we, we're not about that. But the... <laughs> but. <laughs> the so it was a big-time competition. There was a big-time prize on offer mm. for this competition, and... Don't don't say what the prize was because that'll give it away to No, it won't. I won't. But anyway, the and this is it's I suppose it's a bit hard to talk about it without mentioning the competition. But anyway, we'll we'll see how we go. The 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 winning, and I put this in very broad terms, the winning photo, um 
let me put it this way. The, the photos that finished from second to 10th were all better than the winning photo, um, with almost without exception. Photo <laughs> photography competitions, Cam. What, I mean, I'm, I'm yet to see one. <laughs> seriously, I'm yet to see a photography competition that's been run where I agree with the winning image. and that Except, except for the one we're running this in the month of June. Well, that's because we're vote, we're we're running it, but yeah, um, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, am I missing something? And you know the image I'm talking about. And I, I looked at that photo and I went, "What? Wait, what? That mm. that's first place? I mean, yeah, out of all the photos that they showed, and I think they might have shown the top twenty. Was that right? Something like that? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it yeah. would have comfortably ran twentieth, comfortably. Yeah, so. In my humble opinion, but what I don't get it. What am I missing? <laughs> Fill me so, in here, Cam. I'm, I'm so I'm so scared to say anything about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think I, I don't know. Like photo competitions to me are not what they used to be. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put that out there. Like, I think the way they are run these days is a lot differently to how they were run in earlier days. And I guess my experience of photo competitions is more the AIPP stuff and print awards and stuff like that. But, you know, the Pano Awards and all those other ones that are out there. I've, I've entered all of them at some stage, but I don't really enter many anymore because of that exact reason, because I get really dis disheartened when, you know, you get like a, thanks for entering, but unfortunately you weren't successful. And then the winning Im image is like, what, really? That that, that yeah. struck up the judges. And I, yeah. I think th that word judges, I think that is where a lot of my disenchantment comes with photo competitions these days, because I think the judges... And are not they're not from the same generation we are of photographers. Yeah. And what they look for is not what we would consider a good photo or like there's still nice photos that win, but there's they're not, you know, they're not just putrid photos. Like they're still okay photos. But like you said, very rarely do you see one pop up where you go, Yeah, that that's a winning image. That's that's incredible. Yeah. You generally got to scroll down to like the top 50 to find photos that you're like, oh, that's cool. And maybe that's just our taste. I don't know. But but I agree. Um, I think the photo competitions these days, not only did I get flooded with entries, so it must be hard for the judges, but it almost like it almost sort of says to me that there's too many entries. Like they just go through and pick what they want to pick. But something I've noticed, which I raised with you the other day as well, is that some of these photos that are winning competitions or finishing in top 20s have won other competitions last year. Yeah. Or the year before. And yeah. it's like, like my my brain twitches a bit when I see that. I'm like, oh, okay. So Joe Blow won the competition last year for that photo. Oh, good. That's great. It's a nice photo. But then they just entered it in every other photo, they could, any other competition they could get to try and win as many prizes or whatever it is. And to me, that sort of sticks a bit with me. It's like you've won, you've won that great shot, but now you're just going to try and monopolize all the competitions and try and win all of them. Yeah. Um, and I know what people's comeback will be. Oh, yeah, we want to get different feedback from different judges and we want to see how it goes there. But they don't give you feedback, many of them. No, so, that's that's yeah. right. And and but the, but this particular one that we're talking about, surely it's a clerical error. It it must be. I mean, I, I showed a couple of friends of mine, I showed my wife, and it all of them to a person just screwed up their nose, and went, What? That that was first place? You know, yeah, and and then when you showed them the other ones that were runner up or third or fourth, yeah, I'm like, <clears throat> that one's way better. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Yeah, it was just, yeah. I don't know. This one really got to me, but it's been the build up over time because you see it so mm. often. Where, yeah. and you're right, personal taste has got personal bias and preferences do play a part. But yeah. I think, in particular, a fairly significant prize was won for that. Mm. Um, yeah. I'd have thought. A bit more credibility should have been given to the competition, and perhaps yeah. the judging process should have been expanded, or maybe you know a, a proper judging panel. Yeah. Um, but uh, exactly on that as well, like I would have thought that competitions. I'm sure they have some of them in their terms and conditions. Is that if this if this photograph has been entered and won in other prizes, yeah, you you are not able to enter it into this year's award or this whatever yeah. whatever. Um, I know you can't enter the same images into the same awards, yeah, year after year. Well, but if it's sense. if it <clears throat> that makes sense, but I think it should be across the board that yeah. if you've entered a shot that's won something in one award, you can't just then post it on all the others. But yeah, it, it's um, 
I looked at that photo, and again, it's a, it's a nice photo, but it's not mind blowing. It's nothing special. No. I've oh, got a million. Don't, don't I've get got me a million wrong. Of there's, there's nothing inherently wrong with the photo. No, it's no, it's just well executed. It's you yeah. know, but it it ain't an award winning photo. It's just no. not. No, I, like I was just going to say, I said I've got people a are now screaming. Shot. They're like, "Show us what photo!" No, it's I the can't. Yeah, yeah, you won't do that. <laughs> you won't. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got I've got a million shots like that that I've edited yeah. the same, edited the same, and like, yeah, it's a nice photo. It's a great one for the catalog. My fourteen year old son's got a million shots like that. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> but this is where I think, especially with maybe that one. And again, I'm really worried about how we say this because people are going to go search it, and then it gets back to the person who it is, and then all of a sudden we're you know. The devil and can't. I am not having it, a go at the photographer at all. No, I'm not either. I, I think the problem again. It goes back to what I said. I think the problem might have been with that is that the judges have seen that photo and others, many others in that top twenty before on other on other competitions. Perhaps, perhaps. And they just went. They just went. Oh, that that, that I know that's a good shot because I saw it over there. So yeah, I, I'm yeah. interested to see if any of the judges were on other competitions and judged yeah. it because that's a total conflict if it is if they've already yeah, judged it, it once. And if we could be asked, we would do a bit more research and find out. No. But we're not probably not going to do that. But uh, yeah, so, I mean, so I know how, so, you go. So, so I was going to say, how do you fix this problem? Then? Uh, well, I think again, particularly when such a, a hefty prize is on offer, um, I think the judging system's got to be better. Um, yeah, I think as well from memory, I don't. I think the brief was purely just landscape, right? On this, yep, on this, pro, so. on this comp now. Yeah. That's a, a incredibly broad brush, um, mm. you know, and that also makes it harder as well, purely because of the that then just opens it literally up to everyone. Now, yeah. the cynic inside me says that this image was chosen on purpose so that people would talk about the competition, and that could be the case as well. Any publicity, but I, is good I, but publicity. I don't, I, but I don't think so because that photo has won other competitions, right? Yeah, so or or, or rated highly in other competitions, yeah. So, yeah. Clearly, we're wrong, clearly we're wrong because the other yeah. judges and other places have looked at it and said that's a yeah. great photo. If it's a case of where there's smoke, there's fire in this one. I reckon there's there's something more. There's more to it. There must be. You reckon they know the judges or no? No, not necessarily. Um, it, how much, it, how much it, legal trouble could we get in? With no, this? no. I'm, <laughs> well, we haven't. We're not naming names. Or I mean, it just it just seems wrong. There, there's something yeah. not right about that that image yeah. that, that that won the competition. And, and, and you know what it also does? We had a great chat on Bruni Island with a couple of customers, uh, Victoria, who came on the Tark Nine One and this one, um, about competitions and you're know, putting your photos up and you know worrying about what people might say about photos in photo clubs or competitions and stuff like that. And everyone has valid points. Some people like to enter competitions to get feedback to see where they sort of go. Other people like to do it because they're just interested in trying to win prizes. You know, there's all a, a, a reasons everywhere for why people will do it, but. I think what there is an issue at the moment is is that things like that, which we're talking about, I f would find that's quite disheartening to people that enter and look at that and go, and like myself included, look at that and go, really, that's the one that won. I, I think my photo is probably better than that or at least ranked should have ranked higher. And then what people start doing is they look at all the photo competition winners and go out and start shooting like them. Yeah, They go out and say, well, that's what wins competitions. I've got to go out and shoot like that. And I think that's going miles away from what, you know what the whole idea of photography is yeah it's an expression it's an expression of what we see in you know artists or whatever we are you know and how we do that to go and just say well you know such and such at the camera club always wins with these kind of shots that's how i'm going to shoot because i don't want to get recognition as a photographer well you're not all, all you're doing is just copying someone else's ideas and you're not being very individual so that i think that's a flip yeah. side to these things where people look at these competitions and just go that's a shit shot mine's better than that I'm going to go shoot like that if that's how I win. <laughs> if that's how I win prizes, yeah, that's right. And that's that's yeah. not that's not good either. So, and folks, the irony's not lost on me that at the start of this episode we decided to launch a photography photography competition. But Isn't it? uh, it's hilarious. Like it that's, when you when you said that at the top of the show, I'm like, hang on, we're about yeah. to hang crap on all these photos. <laughs> no, no, ours no, better no. ours better be bloody good. Then how are we going to our, judge ours? Our viewers and listeners will know that you know from last time we did this that the the the, the winning photo was very well received. So. Uh, but that's just people being polite behind the scenes. Everyone's like, "That's just crap." They're like, "What the hell is that?" What are these guys? Or did your sister enter the competition, Brendan? Jesus Christ! What, what we could do is <laughs> just give everyone a prize. We should like, like like some photo comps do. Now, if you want to go have a bit of a giggle, I won't mention names. No, I won't mention oh, names. We can't mention names, but anyway, no. There's there's a lot of photographers out there who 
are quite well known who you know, do similar things to what I do and you do and stuff like that. But there's a couple of them that you go on their thing and you look at their awards and you pull down the awards, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, photographer of the year 2022 and all this kind of stuff. There's a couple of them that are pages long, but it's not because they've won competitions. It's because they've entered competitions and they put that there as an accolade. Oh, it's right. like you've entered. That's not an accolade. And no. a lot of, there's a couple of um, photography competitions at the moment where everyone gets highly commended or commended. Like they, everyone, it's like the comeback next year trophy when kids are playing sport. Everyone gets one for entering and then people just flog them on their websites as if they're an award-winning photographer. Right. And I think, I think really that, that that's, that's interesting. That's okay. You, you, you didn't win. He just entered. Well, does that does that mean that I can say that I I tried to win the British Open golf because I played yeah, golf? You played. You played. You, you, yeah, exactly. Yep. Hundred percent. Well, anyone anyone can win that tournament. That's yep. true. You could yep. go out tomorrow and qualify for the British Open. Yep. Yep. Chances are you and, probably couldn't, but technically no, no. you could. No, yeah. So the other the bit of the chat that we had about on Bruni Island with customers, and, and this is the kind of conversations we have on these things. Um. I, I bring it all back to, and I've got a real issue, and, I, and people are going to probably say, shut up, Cam, because you've always got an issue. But I have an issue in the photography world at the moment with egos. Mm. I think a lot of it is ego-driven, especially social media and these competitions and things like that. And I think it's really pushed us away from what photography is all about, which is just our passion for exploring and creating memories and visiting these amazing spots. Yep. So many people now seem to be wanting to visit these amazing spots and get these nice photos purely so someone can stroke them online and say, oh, that's amazing, you're the greatest. And as I said on this trip, I said, you can't go on Instagram and look up someone's photo, for example, the one that won this competition. You can't go in there and say, eh, I don't really think that's a winning image. No. Because you'll, you'll get crucified. Yes. So all we've got now is this false economy of people commenting oh, on everyone's, it's complimenting the, it's everyone's classic, photos. It's the classic echo chamber, isn't it, where you're just totally sort of saying yeah. And the only way to show your disapproval is to not double tap it or to not hit yep. the thumbs up. Yeah. But then so, pe- yeah. But people don't people don't know that. No. So, you know, I I I, so I what I, we I, need, what we need is a new social media channel. So yes. uh it's it's we're gonna mirror Instagram and the way we're gonna change it and copyright it is to reintroduce the thumbs down button. I know what we can call it. Go on. Shitgram. Shitstagram. 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 <laughs> Put up your photos and just be paid out on it. Um, yeah, that's right. I, 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 if you, I'll tell you what, we might do a, cha- a challenge as well. I might, for the month of June, I might just put up the worst photos I've ever put on Instagram and just see what happens. <laughs> because people people will just like them and say, oh, it's amazing. And it's like, yeah. no. no. Like, where's, where's the subjectiveness in photography anymore? There's mm-hmm. none. No, no, I and, agree. And, and, and actually, that would be a fascinating experiment. I'm, I'll do it. I'm over Instagram. I, I was talking to Chelsea, start, another shout out to Chelsea. posting some really bad photos and just see yep. what happens. Yeah. I did it. I did it. I did it once as an experiment, right? Yeah. A couple of, a couple of years ago, I did it once and I, I oversaturated the shot like crazy Yeah. and put it up there. And I got all these nice comments. Wow. I love the color in that. I thought, wow, this is amazing. But, but then I got one message from a good friend of mine from Queensland, Crystal Hutchinson, uh, midnight mm-hmm. photography. If you're ever looking on online, she's an amazing photographer. And she sent me a message. She said, dude, those colors are terrible. What's going on? <laughs> And I sort of wrote back and said, oh, yeah, I might have overcooked it a bit, blah, blah. Yeah. But she reached out and said, hey, nah, that's not yeah. your standard. Yeah, before she commented, she she got in touch that's with you right. behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so there, there's there's anecdotal evidence that I can give you for, for the, the, that there are way more talented photographers out there that you never see. And, yep, and 100%. Case in point is Phil, and I know he's listening because he told me today that he listens He's a customer of mine, Phil. He'll know who he is. He came into his shop, into my shop today, and printed some more photos. Right. This guy is a very, very talented local photographer that nobody here has ever heard of because he's a hobbyist and he doesn't want to. He doesn't post on Instagram. He doesn't even have a website, Facebook, nothing. Right. But right. he comes in and blows right. me away with the quality of his photos every time. And I right. say to him, you, you know, you could, you could sell these. You could. Don't want to, Brendan. I'm I'm a retired man. This is my this is my hobby. I don't want it to become a thing. I don't need it to. And he's happy doing not, you know, I print some photos for him and put them in frames or do the canvas print and whatever for him. They go up in his own home or he gives them away to his friends and family as gifts. And yeah, he loves I it. I like Phil. I like Phil. 
I like Phil too. He's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we have we have good chats about photography when he comes in. Yeah. And so, like I said, like maybe, g'day, Phil. <laughs> um, maybe it's just us. Maybe it's a generational thing that we don't get the new age type of thing. And, and I, I put my hand up first to say that's probably part of what I do. Mm. But I don't think that the fundamentals around good photography and, and rewarding good photography shouldn't have changed. But I think they have. And, and you know, we live in a world of millennials and all those kind of things where they just need praise all the time. Everyone needs praise about everything. And you can't, as soon as you go, you know, 1% to the negative side, you know, you're, you're, you're a terrible person, but yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's funny. These, these competitions are great for people to enter into, but you know, they need to lift their game with the winners oh, and people, and people need to just seriously, just get back into your photography for you. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing, what the competitions are running, anything like that. Just get it in for you and enjoy it like Phil does. And like mm. you and I do, mm. um, and like a lot of other people I know do, and stop worrying about the externals of what your photography might become, and you know all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I think people will go better if they do well, that. That's right. I mean, it's still, uh, you know, it has become about the dopamine hit though of you know opening up a photo a few hours after you've posted to Insta or Facebook and and, and seeing the comments and the praise and yeah. all that sort of stuff. People, people, and I'm guilty of it myself. Go fishing for that kind of stuff. A little bit too much, and that probably clouds their values and judgment on what what actually does make a good good photo. So, um, yeah. and and I've never wanted to set up a burner account more than the other day when I saw that competition on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Well, I reckon, I reckon this idea of posting something in June, I might call it like Jump June. Just put up jump photos. Yeah. With your work, no, folks, we want to see your good stuff. <laughs> so, like, your good stuff. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it's. And it's funny, like a couple of customers on this trip, um, they, they're very passionate about photography. Like they, and you know, one of them was an award-winning photographer. She actually won some of these competitions with a photo that was definitely worthy of winning. Yeah, but still had little, low self-esteem about the images that they were creating, because you know, in some circles, they weren't getting the recognition they thought they might, and they were sort of getting feedback that was maybe not really constructive and stuff like that. And I think what was going on, they're, they're sort of, like I said, they're moving away from the, the love of photography and why we do it. And they're focusing too much on the accolades and they're the, you know, getting praise for the stuff. And I don't, I don't think that's healthy. We, we need to sort of, as a landscape photographer, it should be just about purely enjoying the landscape and the wilderness where we are. And like you said, with Phil, if it means printing a few out and sharing them around or putting them in, in your play on your home, that's fine. Or put them in online, but don't put them online to get stroked. Just put them online mm. to share what this experience you had. That's what it should be about. Yep. The experience and the memory, not not what maybe is going to happen after you put it online. So while while you were talking there, I've I've come up with what our competition is going to be in June. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's going to be weather, whether or not, or no, just weather. That is weather. that that yeah. is the uh, that is the theme. It's weather for June, mainly because oh, yeah. it's June. It's winter. We do get the photos like you've got behind you there on your on your on your uh, screen. Um, yep. We we want to see some weather photos, uh, and we are going to narrow it down to a top ten, and then we're going to pick a winner at the end of June. There you go. Wow, that was I easy. just decided that. So we better put that in the show notes and on the Facebook page and all that kind of stuff because yes. no one listens we, this far. No, that's true. <laughs> so um, you know, I could I reckon I can tell you what the photos are going to be of, but we'll wait and see. I'm excited. That'll be good. It's going to be weather. Well, you're already predicting what people are going to do. Technically, technically, if it's a landscape photo, any landscape photo is a photo of weather. That does, yep. So let's see, let's see where this goes. All right, that sounds good. We want the weather to be the main theme. I think that yep. third point for top top of your discussion we might hold over, since we've already been going for yeah, forty five minutes my, or whatever it is. My dot point after the question mark still sits there. One hundred percent. I'm with you. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, this is normally the part of the show where we have a deer cam. No deer cam this week, and that's fine. We don't have them every week. I mean, eighty-one yeah. episodes. You're not going to get a deer cam every week. No, that's right. If but... you have a deer cam question, please yeah. hit us up on our website, which we haven't mentioned yet. dsps.com.au. Uh, yeah. Jump on to dsps.com.au. Hit us up with the deer cam. Leave it in the comments section below. Do it on Facebook wherever you like. We we want to hear your que- cam wants to answer your questions. <laughs> 
I think one of the questions would be, why do you guys always get upset about things? <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah. Stop. Stop why being are you guys so old school. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stop. Yeah. Stop having your midlife crisis and move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beer donations, Andrew. We are so sorry. Last week we we forgot to mention that your good self, Andrew, bought us a beer on our website dsps.com.au. So apologies. You, Andrew T. Andrew T. Just in case there's more than one Andrew. Andrew. T. T. Thank you, yeah. Mel, for your weekly beer donation. <laughs> we, we will enjoy that. We will see Mel in next week. Is he coming? He's coming. Yeah, he's That's on the trip. Excellent. All right, We've got uh, 20 people excellent. coming to join us next I can't uh, wait. June 10 and 11. Speaking I can't of wait. weather, what's, is the weather going to be good? I haven't looked yet. Can't wait because the Bellarine Peninsula is, is weather affected. And I, and I like that. And part yep. of me hopes that we get a we get a day like you had on Bruni behind you there, or the days that we had on the overland track. Well, maybe not that bad, but um, you know, because we'll we'll be able to help people make the most of those conditions. But yeah, um, yeah, where we're where we're taking photos on the Bellarine lends itself to proper seascapey stuff. Seascapey stuff. Seascapes with you know. I must. It's four funny. I, I... clouds and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to put up something on the screen just to show people yes. on the background here just how much our boat was in swell. So that is oh, that's well. a le- that, that's a level shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's how big we were disappearing behind the waves. Fantastic. Down there. Uh, shout out to Pennycott Journeys as well. The yellow boats here over there. Um, if you ever come into Tassie and you want to go do an experience like nowhere nowhere else, they leave from the Tasman Peninsula down near Port Arthur and also on Bruny Island. Two-hour cruise, three-hour cruise, two-hour cruise. It's a few hours. Um, amazing. Uh, we saw humpback whales here. We had a couple of humpbacks, uh, dolphins, albatross, seals, amazing scenery, incredible waves, and they're really powerful boats. So it feels like you're on a jet, a jet boat. So if you're down there, Pennycott Journeys, uh, the Yellow Boat Company, definitely um, go try them out if you're down in Tassie. I'm sure people listening have been on them before. They're very popular. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen. I'm going to have a crack at that. That looks good. You'd love it. I like it. Do you get so, uh No, I'm fine there. So next week you've got um, some OM Digital Days in Melbourne, Australia as well. I do. So 8th and 9th of June, I'm in Melbourne. Uh, and then the 10th, 11th, I'm in Ocean Grove. Uh, and then I'm back home and then I'm off to a few weeks off and then I'm off to the Flinders Ranges. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to the OM Days. Um just got a uh, notification before that there's the 90 mil macro that's on its way. Uh, also an OM5 and an OM1. And so I've got a few OM1s in the kit now for those guys coming along to play with. And awesome. the macro lens will be good as well. Very yeah. good. That's going to be What great. about you? You've got, obviously, <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> I just saw what you wrote down the bottom there. You're pretty busy then. I will be I will be pretty busy doing that. We will you be busy with one <laughs> hand or two hands, you reckon? <laughs> um but, so you'll uh, be doing work you'll be doing work with me and what next week, but well that's right. I mean the thing is, uh so next weekend when this so next episode, episode eighty two when this goes, yes. you yeah, will yeah. be together here on the ballerine. So looking forward to that. Um no, I've I've just uh launched a couple more uh, entry level workshops through my website, um, yep. which I really love doing, and and they it's good. People get a lot out of them. It's a good spot to start. So if you're yep. thinking about going on one of Cam's workshops or one of my landscapes and seascape workshop or any workshop anywhere doing anything, but you're like, mm, I probably need to have a bit more knowledge about my camera. Well, I run my entry level workshop for you, so um, it's good. It'll give you. It, it's a. It's a good. I've actually had a couple of people come to that workshop who have been taking photos for 20 years and they go, yeah, right. I've been doing it wrong. (laughs) You know, because you just, sometimes you just got to, people get ahead of themselves. You just got to go right back to the foundations, the fundamentals, the basics. And that's what we do. And I did this workshop last week and all four of the customers on it were like, man, this is like, I was blind and now I can see. So uh, there's, I'll just blow my own trumpet for a minute there. But there's nothing better than, um that moment though um when someone someone just gets it the penny drops i call the penny it the penny drops. dropping moment yep. yeah yeah and it's yeah that, that's one of the reasons why i keep doing what i do because i love that i um, love it too and you get that it's an audible gasp they're like yeah ah right yeah, yeah okay and then, I can then it's take followed, that photo. 
And then it's usually followed up with, I can't believe I was that stupid for so many years. I didn't figure that out. <laughs> oh, no, 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 for me, it's normally followed by, how did I do that again? <laughs> yeah, like, tell me again, tell me again. That's, yeah, that's, um, fine. that's that's fine. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's good. It's good when people figure it out and um, make the most of yeah. what they're doing and what they love. So yeah. Um, another quick one that we'll do a quick shout out. If anyone's listened this far into the podcast, then that's great or the show. Um, but we have just announced our next workshop, I'm another big one. Too. I'm just going to put it out there now. We're not going to plug it, flog it too hard yet. You'll be able to see it all online anyway. But uh, next April, Brendan and I are going to be doing the Tarkine and Cradle Mountain as a conjoined workshop, a six day, a six night, seven day workshop. We're going to spend three days in each region. Uh, both regions are incredible for landscape photography, forests, coastlines, fungi in the Tarkine. Then you got Cradle Mountain, the lakes, the Fagus tree, which will be changing. Um, we've got eight spots available. Um, this one's is already filling up. I put it out there today and we've already got three or four spots already gone, but it'll be on the down South photo website. People will see it. Uh, we'll chuck it on the, wherever we put it there, but we'll probably talk a bit more about that next week, but next week I'm going to put out there what we're talking about. All right. no, no more of this grumpy old shit. Okay. We're going to talk about printing because we promised people that we talk about printing and what we need to look at doing. If you want to print your shots. I'm adding it to the show notes as we speak. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you about printing and stuff like that because Fine. you do it for a living every day mm-hmm. of the week. And I think there's a lot of people out there that probably want to print stuff, but maybe not sure how to do it or what to go about yep. and how to do it. So I think together we can maybe help some people. And I'm going to couple that with a very, very special offer for Down South Photo Show listeners. So tune in next week. Jesus, we're giving away everything, aren't we? And why not? We should. Um, I guess that's it. That's the podcast. Yeah. That went quick, didn't it? It always does. We enjoy our yeah. show. Um, you have been listening to episode 81 of the Down South Photo Show. Uh, looking forward to seeing you next week, Cam. That'll be good as always. We'll um, we'll yep. go to the piping hot chicken shop, no doubt. Oh, yes. I do. <laughs> I, do like I do like that. Are we going to play golf? Are we doing that? Are we we are going that? to play golf. I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to make it happen. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your golf clubs. It will be great. All right. They're packed. Excellent. Great. This has been episode 81 of the Down South Photo Show. We'll see you for episode 82 of the show next week. Good night. Uh, well, goodbye. Ciao. Oh, no, I'm allowed to say ciao. Oh, God, again. Can I say get a dog up here? No, that's too much. No. <laughs>